Uh, our next Gorilla Talker is a local artist of sorts, although it doesn't yeah. spend much time here. Um, Lee Kit, oh. I, I'm going to start talking. Yeah. Uh, I'm okay. not really going to introduce you much. No. Uh, mm-hmm. There's work of Lee Kit's downstairs that you can see at yeah. the Vitamin Creative. Yeah, yep. Vitamin Creative Space and Sugar Arts and two more on this floor, uh, Akadalako, my solo show, and also another New York Gallery in Number Free Projects. So as you can tell, he's not busy at all. Um, I'm going to start off just by, by saying that a lot of people, obviously, in many different places, you've had shows recently in the States, there's shows in Europe, I think, not no, so uh, much. In Sharjah. In Sharjah. Yeah. There's very positive responses to your work. How do you account for this? Why do people like your work? I don't know. <laughs> it's, I a, it's a silly question, but... I mean, I'm <laughs> honestly, I really What do know. you think? Mm. Personally, I think that means if I keep making work, that means I, it's better than talking to people. You know, I can communicate better to, to some other people from all around the world, probably. This, it's funny you say that, because in, in your work, there are... Um, a number of borrowed, I feel like there's a number of borrowed elements. Uh, so there's, uh, obviously there's painted fabrics, which are a, a really core sort of material. Uh, there's, obvi- there's also the cardboard of packaging. A uses thing uses, uh, um, Lee Kit yeah. uses packaging uh, and then paints these yeah, over again. The logo. Yeah. Exactly. But also song lyrics. Yes. You, can you explain your use of song lyrics? Uh-huh. I think all these elements, including the uh, lyrics or brand's logo or even pattern, uh, when I look back, because I grew up in Hong Kong, born in Hong Kong, grew up in Hong Kong, so I think I'm being brainwashed already because Hong Kong was being colonized, and I would personally say now uh, Hong Kong is being colonized again <laughs> by China. And um, I take myself as a symptom. Uh, I s- my mother tongue is Cantonese, but uh, I always listen to listen to English songs in eighties boys group or like new romantic song old stuff. And then uh, when I go shopping, I never use some uh, Taiwan or Chinese branding. When I was young, I go to supermarket. I feel very intimate when I s- see those kind of different products, hand care products, because it's everywhere. But now I think back is that uh, it's kind of global thing. I mean. Like Johnson and Johnson's, this kind of branding is everywhere in the world, and and those kind of songs I keep listening to when I was young, like Air Supply, or I don't know, really, I don't like that personally, <laughs> but I can hear them everywhere in everywhere in the world. I I even can hear this kind of song in Zaja. So in this sense, I think this kind of memory to me is not a very private thing. So I try to project something on it. It's personally, it's come something like personal emotion, but I don't think so. A, for me, there's a strange tension when I'm in the, uh, one of your spaces, let's say. Um, th- there's a, obviously a sense of nostalgia, I think, uh, which might be people's first reaction, and particularly the, the palette that you have you know, of, of very soft pinks, blues, um, greens, this, these sorts of pastel colors seem very comfortable. Um, they immediately bring to mind you know, uh, people's sort of infancy, uh, bathrooms, these familiar, very familiar, homely, domestic spaces on the one hand. But then there's also this other combination that I think I can see it's a personalized space. There's something where I feel like I'm an intruder. I feel, so I feel un- uncomfortable because it's very familiar on the one hand. Like, oh, maybe that's, that I have this object or I've had a room that looked like this, but I know it's not mine. Is this some, can you comment on that? Uh, of course, to me, those kind of environment or objects I use or choose, only choose, uh, of course, very intimate to me. But I always think there's something hidden b- uh, behind all this situation or setting or products or, if, or objects, whatever I call them. Those kind of hidden thing is not something good. You know what I mean? You have a, a very comfortable life or living room and you have a good living. doesn't mean that you live in a very good, uh, you're not living in a good life. You don't, you don't get what you want. And those are hidden things. Sometimes it's not very easy to explain. I would describe them as some kind of undescribed, uh, unspeakable emotion or state of mind where I think all of us confront every day or every night. 
I will give one example is that certainly I think everybody have this experience that you wake up in the midnight and then you suddenly feel very guilty but you did nothing wrong you just want to go to the bed go to sleep again but you can't yeah I call this kind of thing like hidden thing so I think the best way is that uh, to show this kind of hidden thing is not like uh, tell you it's very straightforward so I make use of like those kind of pastel color or lyrics basically love songs or indie songs I think it makes sense because there's a comparison or very extreme. Uh, and then the words also find their way into the fabrics and onto, yeah. onto the, the cardboards. Yes. In a similar way, they're kind of hidden by layers of paint uh, and inside objects. or yeah. right. And also in this way, I think I try to get rid of so-called people like keep looking at the formal uh, aspect of my works. Mm. And then, but to me, the formal aspect, is, it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, would you describe it as installation? Uh, I prefer to call them setting. <laughs> Just settings. Settings. Yeah. 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 Personally, I would call. M- I think I am painter, <laughs> even though I work on setting or video, mm. and and now I'm working on some provocation. But I think I'm a, more like a painter. But as a painter, why I develop my works in this way, like use my uh, painting in daily life and then blah, 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 something like that, is that I try to get rid of this kind of category or get rid of all the categories. And mm. it's about vocabulary, basically. So I try not to call my work installation because just try to not to be categorized. Mm. So it's, yeah, there's a, uh, again, that this hidden la- layer and level. Um, I'm going to talk about the the ungovernables because it's a, it, I think it's an interesting exhibition uh, concept in itself. Um, I'd like to ask your experience. This was a, a recent exhibition in the New Museum in the States uh, with a, a whole group of uh, uh, young artists, yeah, artists yeah. Uh, from all sorts of places around the world. Um, and th- well, there were also works that were made together. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. Could you tell us a little bit about that process? Uh, was it the first time that you'd worked with some of these people, or uh, mostly yes, yeah, the first time. And somehow we can't re- even communicate because we don't have common English. Some of them can't speak English, and so the show coming up. I mean, how it come up is that I met the curator two years ago, and then she kept like spent two years, three years traveling around the world to. To, to have this idea to, to for the show, doing research. And then what else? Mm. About the show itself, I think she's doing something very challenging in terms of like the U.S. context mm. because uh, the show 37 uh, artists, uh, among them, only two of them from the States, only two or three, two to three of them from Europe, uh, a triennial in an institution, very important institution in, this, in New York. I think it's just very challenging. Mm. And she make it. Yep. So it worked for you. Uh, yes, because my work usually is not doesn't really fit in this kind of a context. I mean, mm-hmm. triennial or museum show. So, why uh, why is that? Usually very small, not eye catching, blah blah blah. Uh, not very contextual, but uh, not very conceptual. So, yeah. for curatorial show, it's not very easy to use <laughs> or to apply to the show. It's. I mean, it's terrible to see by all work as biography, yeah. and yet it does remind me of speaking to you. Oh, really? That okay. often you you claim not to have much to say, uh-huh. but actually you do, <laughs> uh-huh. and I see that in the work where you're talking about this political level, uh-huh. and you're very conscious. I know as a person of uh-huh. the various different changes that have happened in Hong Kong, uh-huh. uh, and and yet it doesn't seem like that. You're not making work which would immediately seem to be like you're trying to make a loud statement, no. but it's there. Yeah, I think so. I think it's more of practice rather than the so-called artist statement or a very strong statement. I think the practice itself uh, should be a very strong statement, but it shouldn't be like a uh, very eye-catching thing, you know what I mean? It's like you can get it in five seconds. Mm. Mm. Is there um, the the spaces that you, you have, a, a usually domestic spaces, oh, yeah. um, is, is there some sort of relationship there uh, where you'd, you've talked about sinister... So that's something hidden. What, how did, how, what's the drama involved for you in the oh. domestic? I mean, it, is that specific to your Hong Kong experience? Because oh. I'm thinking of small apartment spaces that people oh. live in. Uh, is that... Uh, actually, no, because <laughs> I never live in a very, very small apartment in Hong Kong. Yeah. I, I mean, my apartment is not very big, but okay. Uh, 
I think it's more about my imagination、mm. or some association when I go to somebody's home or even see some f- happy family photos.、Mm. When I was young,、right. I always think one example is that when I see some family photos, I never take group photos or family photos. Is that when I was young, like five or six, or already looking at these kind of photos, and I would also see or imagine that all people died、uh, or the father is smiling very happily, but he has cancer. But this kind of association and. I think it is not the idea of of my practice, but it is basically what initiated or inspired me to go in this direction.、Mm. Yeah. I mean, make use of domestic space. So later on, I maybe I feel a little bit bored. Or you make use of domestic space. So before it's being consumed too much, I will move to looking at office space.、Right. Yeah, but office space, I never work in an office, so <laughs> it's something I need to imagine again. Step.、Yeah. Is this is this something that you would do in other、um, that you've done in other mediums? You mentioned video, for example.、Oh. Um, how does how does the video work relate to these settings that you're making?、Uh, it depends on the setting. Like in Basel, I make a like demonstration flat. So it's one one、uh, perspective of that where it's like questioning what is the ideal life because demonstration flat is like showing your ideal home. In the、yeah. future, so、uh, it's like a very dreamy house, and then I put a television there with the all the、um, footage from YouTube,、uh, including like June Fourth or people dying in Yemen at that time, the revolution, and then yeah, when people sit there looking at the TV, and then you see all this footage. So it is not really like an ideal home. Yeah. 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 I mean, it depends on the video.、Uh, the video depends on the setting. Like sometimes I do some karaoke video because the setting is a karaoke lounge. Yeah, it's in that sense. It, I mean, it's something more. More I hear you talk about it, it seems more sinister and dystopian. Yeah, make people sit down there, or they observe that there's something different. Like a karaoke video, actually, you cannot choose the song because I make them like a short movie, keep looping, so、yeah. force them to sit down. But they can. They're allowed to, to sing the song, but they can't choose songs. They、yeah. can't choose. They can't、right. choose.、Yeah. Okay,、um, so what's next? You mentioned office spaces.、Uh, are you g- working on anything at the moment that will、uh, not yet? Be a new direction. Not yet. I think maybe next next year the the,、uh, the office space. Yeah. Yes.、Yeah. Now recently I work on some propagation project and also doing some. I don't know how to call it. It's like a residency, but I need to do something about re- some relationship among people.、Mm. Are you? Are we even looking at museum? Our project is called museum in、mm. coming future in August.、Right. So I don't know when. I mean, I know when will it happen, but I don't know what we are do. Yeah. 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 Right. Okay.、Um, that do we have? We kind of have more time. Great.、Um, I want to ask you about writing actually, and whether you because I know that you've you've blogged and、oh, you, you sorry <laughs> my blog. <broad> okay. <laughs> You've you've blogged and and these sorts of things, and I think there are other artists as well of say your generation who are very interested in writing,、um, and then partly because of social networks and so on and so forth. How does what's your experience of that? Is that something that you're conscious of in, as a form of practice, or writing? Right. No, I can't write longer than one hundred words. Whether in Chinese or English, and that's why I started writing broad at that time because that could be very poetic. Oh, thank you. <laughs>、uh, but I started writing the blog is because I I was in New Zealand for residency,、uh, and then、uh, yeah, I want to write something, but not to show to anyone. I think because I I think internet is the best way to he- to hide yourself. So I do, and then later on, I don't know why, become more and more people s- notice that there's a blog. But at that time, I also use it as a notebook to jot down some idea. Because sometimes I don't have a notebook in, on my hand, but I have a computer. Then I start writing the blog again. Yeah, yeah that's how we start. But and then it evolved to、uh, the recent stages. I totally rely on the blog. I mean, it's like almost like a almost like a work to me. My blog. It, it's it's funny. Like for me, that seems like something that reflects this generation, where rather than finding private like privacy in terms of A hidden space. You find privacy in the most public, the most accessible, the the most easily copyable sort of medium.、Uh, I think it's a way to like describe、uh, or try to find a way to describe what is private and public. Yeah, yeah that's the best way. My I, I always use an example. It's like 
uh, on internet is like in a public toilet. Uh, you can this is very public place everybody can go. But when you find a toilet, you go inside, lock the door, you feel total privacy. Sometimes you feel that kind of quiet feeling actually is stronger than when you are at home. You know what I mean when you lock it. So internet is a place like this, I think. Yeah, interesting. Okay. Um, we're going to have to leave it there, I'm afraid. Okay. But thank you very much, okay. Lee Kit, uh, our fourth Gorilla Talker. The Gorilla Talks are going to continue. Mm. Um, but thank you. And thank there's you. Lee Kit's work here and also downstairs. Um, I'll let yeah. you find it. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Lee.